But what are the most common phobias, you ask? One is agoraphobia. It can get so bad that simple things like ordering food or answering the phone can freak them out. The fear of flying. This could stem from a combination of fears, like fear of heights, enclosed spaces, crowds, loss of control. Then there's also another version of that where they actually use virtual reality therapy where they actually plug in and they expose the people to this. Hey guys, Dr. Nene here. I practice as a cardiothoracic, vascular, and general surgeon, and I'm now a health tech innovator who wants to improve lifespans and lifestyles. So stay healthy, stay curious, and keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to talk about something which is very near and dear to me because a lot of my friends suffer from it, and many of us are fascinated by it, but it doesn't help to just be fascinated. And so a friend of mine related to me the story of his wife who struggles to climb into an elevator because she's claustrophobic. Now imagine your daily life where you can't go into a tall skyscraper or building, but you are destined to go into stairs. 20, 30, 40 years ago, it wouldn't have mattered, but nowadays in cities, it does matter. And so we thought about how can we combat that? Today, we're talking about phobias. While they're fascinating for many of us and we can't understand it, it's very frightening for many people. What are they? They're intense and very irrational fears. And if you have a phobia, even just thinking about these encounters can give you a host of physical symptoms, including shaking, sweating, dizziness, a pounding heart, uh, dry mouth, you name it, it's there. But unlike general anxiety disorder, which is one thing that people have, a phobia is usually connected to something specific. It could be anything, a place, a situation, an object, or an encounter which they've had in their lifetimes, which set this, sets this off. What causes it? No one really knows. Some of it might be genetic and might be translated within family members. In addition to that, you can also have traumatic events like near drowning or exposure to certain situations, like tight spaces or heights where something's happened, which can trigger a persistent phobia. People with health issues or those who've experienced brain injuries, substance abuse or depression may also develop phobias. But what are the most common phobias, you ask? One is agoraphobia. It's the fear of wide open spaces and big crowds and being trapped outside the home. People in those situations yearn to stay at home and they don't go out. There's social phobia, also called social anxiety disorder, where people are super worried about social situations and end up isolating themselves. It can get so bad that simple things like ordering food or answering the phone can freak them out. There's glossophobia, which is known as performance anxiety. I think everyone's had that at one time or another, but it can be so bad that you can't get up on the stage. Acrophobia, which is fear of heights, like the movie Vertigo, and the sensation and the fear is activated when you go to space. Claustrophobia is the fear of enclosed or tight spaces. Interestingly, some people have a fear of open spaces, but there's others um, who actually have claustrophobia, which is much more common. Aviophobia, the fear of flying, this could stem from a combination of fears, like fear of heights, enclosed spaces, crowds, loss of control, all coming together as one petrifying cocktail. And if you've ever seen it in practice, it's pretty amazing to watch. Dentophobia is the fear of a dentist or a dental procedure. I'm sure a lot of you have that, but for other reasons, because no one likes to go to the dentist. I'm sorry, guys. Hemophobia is the fear of blood or injury. Well, for a surgeon, that sort of thing can't happen. So you ask me, what are the treatments? And it consists of a few things, uh, but the main constituents of treatment are uh, with cognitive behavioral therapy, where they basically use measures to teach the patient about emotional regulation and basically desensitizing them from the actual phobia. Uh, then there's also another version of that where they actually use virtual reality um, therapy where they actually plug in and they expose the people to this, the fear of flying. This could stem from a combination of fears, like fear of heights, enclosed spaces, crowds, loss of control. If someone has a problem uh, which is causing them to have real issues, they can also take medications for anxiety and or uh, for other types of things which cut the edge off. But that's not really the first line. I would say cognitive behavioral therapy is probably the first line. In summary, people tend to laugh off phobias when they don't really have to. The truth is they can seriously impair people's lives. 
In anyone's case, if your phobia is getting in the way of everyday life, it's time to reach out for help. With the right support, you might come to learn that there's nothing to fear. And why should you live your life in fear every single day from things you can't control? So don't forget to share this with everyone because you're helping everyone in the community. And like, subscribe, and share if you like what we've said. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode.